Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about Doctor Who, The War Machines, broadcast in uh, June and July 1966, and uh, written by Ian Stewart Black, who uh, wrote the previous story of The Savages, but it was based on an idea by Kit Pedler, who, um, of course, um, we're introduced to his most famous creations a couple of uh, stories later in The Tenth Planet. And as always, at this uh, point in Doctor Who uh, history, the Doctor is played by William Hartnell and uh, Jackie Lane plays Dodo and we're introduced to Ben and Polly as well, Annika Wills and Michael Craze. Now, I suppose if you could sum this story up in a sentence, it would be something like a supercomputer plans to take over the world and it's in four episodes in the first episode the doctor and dodo have landed back in london in uh, contemporary london that's 1960s london and uh, dodo is delighted and the post office tower has just been built so their attention's immediately drawn towards that the doctor noticed some kind of strange en energy emanating from there so they go and investigate, and, and when they go into the post office tower, there's this, uh, this incredibly sophisticated, cutting-edge uh, computer, which is called Votan, named after the Norse god. And uh, this computer is beginning to control the minds of the humans around it, including the chief scientists and the people working at that story in the post office tower. At the end of this episode, it's revealed that Votan wants the Doctor. This computer can clearly sense the Doctor's intelligence and, uh, and superhuman intellectual power. In episode two, Votan uh, is uh, ordering the humans under its sway to create these war machines which um, are going to uh, take over London and then the world. And um, they're being constructed in Covent Garden. And they're rather striking machines um, these kind of big tapes on the side, these protuberances out the front, kind of a radar at the top. They look a bit, a little bit like tanks. And and then in the third episode, Polly, uh, this office worker who who works there, her mind's taken over. And uh, in the meantime, Dodo seems to go missing. The the previous companion um, after she's introduced to Dodo and um, and Ben. Ben's a sailor who. Um, He's friends with uh, Polly, um, and Ben stumbles into the warehouse where these machines are being constructed. And um, Ben's kind of uh, rumbled. They realise he's sneaked in, and Ben manages to escape. And then in this uh, quite lengthy action sequence, uh, the army come um, to destroy this, this, this machine, this war machine. There's one uh, which is in operation at the moment. But this uh, war machine manages to repel the army and they have to retreat. In the fourth episode, the war machines are planning to attack, masterminded by Votan, of course, the supercomputer. And uh, the government, um, etc., have got a wind of this and they're, they're kind of ordered a lockdown. People have got to uh, desert the streets. It's too dangerous. Uh, sounds rather familiar as I'm saying this. And um, the Doctor comes up with this plan to trap one of these uh, war machines, they uh, have this kind of ring of cable, they entice it in and um, they close it off. So it's kind of trapped in this ring of uh, cable. And then the doctor manages to turn this um, against Votan. And then the war machines uh, then go back to the post office tower. And uh, sure enough, they get past the humans who are under the sway of Otan, and they destroy it. They destroy the computer. This breaks the spell on the humans, and uh, the day is saved. They go to thank the Doctor, but he's gone off already, going back into his TARDIS. And the Doctor's informed that Dodo wants to stay, even though we haven't seen her for a little while, and Ben and Polly stumble into the TARDIS right at the end. The War Machines is very much of its time, um, like a lot of Doctor Who, of course, but... You know, also very charming, and um, this is very much the swinging 60s through the filter of a children's TV show. We, we, we go into this club where uh, Ben and Polly meet each other, and, uh, and Dodo's there, and 
Yeah, it's it's kind of got this real kind of uh, Austin Powers kind of feel to it in a way. Uh, it's very cringy as well. I mean, it's not like, it's certainly not cool, <laughs> put it that way, but it's fun nonetheless. And it's nice to see the Doctor and co knocking around London and making the most of this new building, the post office tower. I guess the last time we saw them using London a lot was in the Dalek invasion of Earth. But it's good fun. And, you know, it's got some of the kind of uh, classic Doctor Who themes in there, such as people versus machines, um, mind control, machines which gain their own intelligence. And it's quite funny to see this cutting-edge computer, Votan, which is, you know, like this huge, massive uh, thing full of tape reels and blinking lights, etc. You know, it's really... Uh, funny from today's standpoint it's, it's rather charming you know to see that we say goodbye to dodo in this episode who i don't think is many people's favorite companion she's certainly not mine although i do think she deserved a better send-off she kind of suddenly disappears i think in episode one or two to go somewhere or to get someone or something and then you never see her again <laughs> And I felt, you know, she might not have been the most charismatic character in, 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 in the Hooniverse or whatever, but I think she at least deserved to say goodbye to the Doctor properly. Um, Polly and Ben seem to have a bit more life about them, a bit more energy, particularly Polly. Ben has kind of got this rather small man kind of syndrome, it seems. He's quite angry and he's got this rather sometimes phony sounding Cockney accent. But as an entrance, I guess at least they're quite memorable and it's, it's nice to have um, a pair again, you know, a bit like Ian and Barbara. The Doctor, as always, is really good in this. You know, William Hartnell is always so watchable as the Doctor, even when the stories aren't so good, which is quite rare in the first Doctor stories, I think, or when the effects aren't good or, or, or whatever it is, or if the companion's a bit naff. William Hartnell is always a really good Doctor. And he is in this as well. So yeah, the War Machines, uh, quite entertaining, very much of its time, but an enjoyable close to season three, uh, nonetheless. Uh, thanks for watching. There's just a brief slideshow about the uh, what each episode's about, as well as the, uh, some of the themes after this. Bye.